Can't decide what to do on your port days on your Disney cruise? Don't book those shore excursions just yet. We're going to take you through what we did in Cozumel, Grand Cayman, and Jamaica. Our first port of call was Cozumel in Mexico. Cozumel is an island located off the eastern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and it's a popular cruise destination. Just over 20 years ago I used to be in Cozumel every Wednesday while working on board the Royal Majesty as a performer. The Royal Majesty was the flagship of Majesty Cruise Line which no longer exists. I'm not sure if any of our viewers remember the Royal Majesty or possibly sailed on her. If you did I would love to hear from you. I was fully expecting to see a much more developed Cozumel and I was really really pleased to see as we sailed in that it looked pretty much the same. As we weren't going on a ship excursion we didn't have to rush off the ship so we stayed in cabanas and had a lovely leisurely breakfast as we looked out at the views over Cozumel. We made our way down to deck one where the gangway was. This wasn't a tender port so we could walk straight off. You have to have your key to the world card with you. They scan you out as you leave the ship and on return you are scanned back in. And if you're over 18 you have to bring a government photo ID with you, a driver's license or a passport will be fine. It's a fairly straightforward walk from the ship to the terminal building. There are rickshaws available if you need assistance. And speaking of vehicles, we decided to hire a Jeep as we were doing our own thing in Cozumel and not doing a ship excursion. These are readily available from the Punta Langosta shopping center which is directly at the port. There's a walking bridge straight into the shopping center and there are kiosks with car hire staff ready to greet you. And other excursions if you want to do something more specific. If you don't really want to go far, you could spend at least a portion of your day shopping. There are plenty of shops around in the shopping center. There's Senor Frogs just outside, which is a Caribbean staple. Again, I remember many days here while I was working on cruise ships. Do you really remember them? <laughs> yes, I do. And we were walked to the car hire company by a guide. This was on a back street, not far from the shopping center, and we got to see a little bit of local color on the way. Our Jeep was fine, but there were a few issues that we did come across, which you'll see soon. Driving in Cozumel is relatively straightforward. For Americans and people in other parts of the world that drive on the right, the same traffic laws apply. As you come out of Cozumel town and you're facing the sea, if you turn left, you'll hit a straight road that pretty much takes you all the way around the island. And there's hardly anybody driving on it. But then here's the problem we told you about. No idea how fast I'm going. The speedometer was broken. It was there but it didn't move, so we had no idea what speed we were doing at any point on this trip. On the very southern tip of Cozumel, you'll find this rather lively looking Jamaican bar. That was not our destination. We were actually headed for the Punta Sur Ecological Park. This area is a natural state reserve with over a thousand hectares filled with a wide variety of flora, fauna and different lagoon systems. Entry was $19 each for adults. There's quite a lot to see as you drive into the ecological park and we got to test the suspension on the Jeep as you can see by the hood or the bonnet in the front rocking back and forth. There are signs everywhere about crocodiles crossing. That's very reassuring, but at least they put a sign. Don't get out of your car or walk here. Obviously that's not a crocodile. I think that's a vulture. Yes it is, and that wasn't our only concern. We parked when it was safe to do so, and we met Cesar. Now, that's not Cesar. I think his name was Juan, but he showed us Cesar, which is a giant crocodile. One of hundreds that live in the ecological park. He was huge and absolutely wild. This was not a zoo. Juan was one of a number of guides around the park, all with identity badges on, who were there to explain a bit more about what happens. Here, for example, the birds are all flying away because they get spooked by the crocodiles. There's also a really good viewing platform that you can go up to, not recommended if you're scared of heights, where you can look down and you can see the whole lagoon and the crocodiles and the birds 
and the lighthouse beyond it. We'll come to this later because there are other things to visit as well as the lagoon. There's a lighthouse, there's a small museum, there's a lot to see in Punta Sur. I really recommend it. For instance, just by Cesar, there was this, which a lot of people think is a house, but it's actually the bottom part of a Mayan lighthouse. Once again, the guides there are really, really helpful. There's no charge for their services, but obviously it's customary to tip them. We also saw lots of iguanas. This was one of the first we saw on our trip, which was really exciting for us. A bit further down, you'll find the area where the lighthouse is. There's more iguanas there, as well as a museum and a bar. And several small gift shops. This guy, who I believe was called Chincho, made us lemonade fresh behind the bar. He then made a call up to the beach to his friends and got us a discount on some free nachos, which we'll get to a bit later on. Here's the lighthouse and the museum we talked about. We didn't end up going into the lighthouse, but it was free of charge once you've paid for the entry into the parks. But this was just a nice place to walk around, take in a bit of the views, and just have a little relax. We got back in the jeep to go to the beach area, still within the Punta Sur Park. We also saw signs saying raccoon crossing, which we thought was fantastic. Being from the UK, we kind of think raccoons are rather marvellous. What we didn't know at the time, and we've since found out, is that actually the Cozumel raccoon is endangered, and they're really only in a few places on Cozumel. Being American, I don't find raccoons that amazing, although I have to admit, the ones we did see which you'll see coming up soon, were quite cute. Within the park, there's an area where there are beach clubs, restaurants where you can get something to eat and drink. We went to one that was recommended by the guy that made us our lemonade as we got a discount and some free guacamole. The beach loungers are absolutely free of charge as long as you're eating or drinking something. And the prices weren't too bad considering what it was and where we were in the world. There are signs everywhere about white syndrome as Cozumel is really trying hard to protect its coral reef. We found this on the beach, which we then put back in the water. It just shows how bleached the reefs can get due to certain kinds of sun cream. So you're asked to not wear sun cream in the water in Cozumel. Or use reef safe sun cream. We all enjoyed going in the water here, it was lovely. But not as much as the raccoons enjoyed camping out next to the restaurant. These are the local residents of the Del Cielo Beach Club and we understand that they've been there quite a while and are quite happy. What is it that you Brits find so amazing about raccoons? It's their faces and their little hands and their tails. They're just, oh, they're just so cute. She's obviously never had her trash tipped over by them. We had our free guacamole. Muchas gracias, Chincho. That was also very cute. If guacamole can be cute. And we went back in the water for a little bit. The water in Cozumel is so clear. It is amazing. I think the next time we go back to Cozumel, we'll definitely do a diving or a snorkeling excursion. It wasn't long before our food arrived. I went for the chicken nachos, which was basically the size of my torso. And Beth and the kids went for fajitas. They were okay, nothing special, but it was fun to have Mexican food in Mexico on the beach. The whole thing came to about $80. After that, we left the beach to go down further into the ecological park and take one of the boat rides. This is also included in your admission. It's a really, really good deal. Again, you have a guide on board who talks you through what you're seeing, the history of the area, and what they're doing to preserve it. It's really interesting, really fun for children and adults alike. There were different nationalities on board, and our guide did a really good job of going between English, Spanish, and German, and I think French as e well. Even a little bit of French. Yeah, and I think actually a bit of Chinese, if I remember rightly. I think one um, or two words, he, yeah. He did try. He was really friendly and really kind, and we really enjoyed it. More than the views, we were here to see the wildlife, and we went crocodile spotting. As we pulled away, I noticed we had a little bit of a peeping Tom out back behind the boat.
being a local guide, he really knew what to look for and showed us a number of different crocodiles nestled on the banks as, as we traveled around the lagoon. He also told us about the flamingos that come a bit later in the year than when we were there. We were there in October and lots and lots about the different habitat. He wasn't just a local guide, he was a fully qualified zoologist. As we were leaving, I saw our visitor one more time and he was even bigger than Cesar before. The weather held out, it was great until we got back in the Jeep and the heavens opened. I grew up in Michigan, which is known for its great weather. I lived in Florida, which is known for its downpours. I now live in England, which is full of rain almost all year round. I have never driven through rain like this in my life. Other people were pulling over, but it didn't last long. And soon we were back in Cozumel town to return the hire car. We'd had a really, really great day until the weather changed, which was actually as we were leaving Punta Sur. And we feel that Punta Sur is a really good place to visit. There's so much to see and do there. You've got animal spotting, you've got ruins, you've got the lighthouse and the museum, and you've got the lovely beach with the different beach clubs, plus the free boat trip on the lagoon. So it's really worth going to, I think. I'm glad we did it. The lunch we had there was around $80, $85. It was $56 admission for the four of us into the Punta Sur Park. Our hire car was $180 for the day. So I think we probably did it a bit cheaper than if we'd gone on a four day Disney excursion. Quite a bit. And what was nice about it is we could tailor it specifically to what we needed. We do see the value in cruise ship excursions. We've done them in the Med to cities like Ephesus in Turkey. And we did do a Disney Cruise Line excursion later on in, in the cruise, which we're going to talk about later. But sometimes it's really nice to kind of do your own thing. We had no preconceived notions about what we were gonna do. We knew we were probably going to hire a car. Again, I remember back to my cruising days, we used to hire a VW Beetle and drive around the island. It was great fun. So I kind of knew we wanted to hire a car. But other than that, we had no plans and Punta Sur was fantastic. Equally fantastic was the sail away from Cozumel. The sun came back out and allowed us some spectacular views as we went on to our next destination of Grand Cayman. Good morning, welcome to Grand Cayman, a British overseas territory in the Caribbean. Grand Cayman is a tender port, unlike Cozumel, and with tender ports you have small boats or tenders, either provided by the ship itself or by the local port to take passengers back and forth from the ship to the dock. This is usually because the port is too shallow for a large cruise ship such as the Disney ships or the Celebrity Equinox, which we're really delighted to be docked with. We love Celebrity Cruises and if you haven't caught our series on board the Celebrity Constellation, I'll put a link to that in the description below as well as in the upper right hand corner of your screen right now. When it's a tender port, Disney asks all passengers wishing to leave the ship to make their way to the theatre, at least it was the theatre on our ship, where you're given tender tickets. You then wait for your tender number to be called in the comfort of the theatre before making your way to the gangway. We barely sat down before they called our number and we were up on our feet and ready to catch the tender into Grand Cayman. You board the tenders on the Disney Fantasy, the same place you disembark in a normal port, deck one by the medical center. In Grand Cayman, these are local tenders from a local company with two decks, an upper deck and a lower deck, all with great views of the sea around you. And this means everybody gets off much quicker than if they're using the ship's tenders, which are usually the lifeboats. Looking at the water in Grand Cayman, even at the port, it was stunning and we couldn't wait to get to the beach. As you come off the tender, it's a short walk into the terminal. Again, there are usual stands selling food and clothing and different souvenirs. This is also where you would meet any tours that you've pre-booked. 
What we did was make our way to the exit of the port and to the taxi drivers who fill up the minibuses to take you to the beach. These guys have signs, much like our driver here, and they direct you across the road, through some pretty dodgy traffic, through an alleyway and around a bush mm -hmm. to where he has some free parking, and you get in the bus going down to... Seven Mile Beach. Which is not quite seven miles, we were told. It's about six and three quarter miles long. Yeah, it was six dollars each per person, each way, which again, we didn't think was too reasonable. And there were lots of these shuttles. Everyone was in tourism tops. So you could tell it was an organized thing and that they were doing these all the time. So we felt very, very safe. We got to see a little bit of Grand Cayman along the way. And it was a really, really cool mix of British and Caribbean with a tiny little sprinkling of American thrown in. Being a British overseas territory, they drive on the left, which I was very happy about. It was good to see. There are lots of similarities between Grand Cayman and the United Kingdom, not least the petrol stations, which were exactly the same as we have back in the UK. A shame here in the UK we don't have the same petrol prices. But it's not just the Brits. Americans won't be homesick here either. They've got a KFC outlet, a Wendy's, Pizza Hut, Subway, pretty much everything you would want. All the comforts of home. The taxis drop you at the public part of Seven Mile Beach where there are lots of facilities. There are toilets and changing facilities and there's lots of food stalls, amazing smells with all the delicious things being cooked. Um, I imagine maybe on weekends these are busier. It was just right when we were there. You also can hire sun lounges. We hired two sun lounges, which was $25 for two. That came with an umbrella as well and we were lucky enough to get very close to the water. We were practically front line. Not practically, we were front line. And this gave us a great opportunity to dip in and out of the water as we needed, because it was really, really hot. And the water, as I said before, was even more beautiful than it was in Cozumel. In fact, the kids didn't leave the sea the entire time we were there. I think this might have been their favorite day. And they're not water babies. They don't come in and out of pools very often. They don't go in the sea very often but this was something special. All this time in the sea made us quite hungry, so soon we set off for some of the local food stalls for some lunch. This lady in the back of the shot convinced me that she had the best conch fritters in all of Grand Cayman, so we had to try them. But then she ran out, so there was only enough for me. <laughs> How were they? They were very good. The jerk chicken was okay. Good enough for a beach. Unlike some parts of the Caribbean that can occasionally feel a little bit intimidating, we felt completely safe and at home in Grand Cayman. The locals were so nice, so friendly, not pushy. You know, if we wanted to buy some food or, or rent a sunbed, they were very accommodating, but they never, never tried to push it and ask for more money than they should. And at the end of the day, as obviously they were winding down for the afternoon, they even gave the kids a free ride on the banana boat. I mean, how amazing is that? It was really cool.
We went back to where we were dropped off and there were plenty more minibuses to grab to get back to the port. These were the same prices they were to come in to Seven Mile Beach, six US dollars per person. We felt we had a really, really good day in Grand Cayman and cost-wise it was reasonable, the taxis were cheap enough, the food was reasonably priced and we had a fantastic day. It felt a really full day as well. Very often you can have a day that is good but just relaxing and not a lot happens. But this felt full of action as well as a lot of relaxation as well. Back on board, we got ready for sail away and the officers on the bridge were also ready to sail the ship away to our next port, Falmouth, Jamaica. This was a seven night Western Caribbean cruise on board the Disney Fantasy and it wasn't all port days. We had two days at sea. If you're wondering how to fill your days at sea on the Disney Fantasy, we'll be covering that in a future vlog where we look at all the onboard activities. We will also do Castaway Key in a separate vlog, as there's a lot to talk about. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and click that notification bell so you can see both of those videos when they drop this coming Monday and the Monday after. And now, on to Jamaica. Falmouth, Jamaica is quite a new port. Obviously, cruise ships have been going to Jamaica for a very long time, but actually docking in Falmouth has only been something that's happened in the last few years. Royal Caribbean put a lot of money into developing the port. It's very deep and can take a lot of the bigger cruise ships, particularly the big, big RCCL ships. It may be a new cruise port, but Falmouth has been a commerce port for hundreds of years, the banana trade and the sugar trade in particular. And in the 1940s and 1950s, there was a certain dock worker called Harry Belafonte who wrote a song called Deo, which you might have heard of. Falmouth is a really pretty port. They've done a really great job to create it into something that you could just visit without actually having to leave the port area. There's lots of different shops, places to eat, and music. You could easily spend all day there, and you might be wondering why we chose to do an excursion in Jamaica rather than enjoying a port like Falmouth. We were very aware of the travel advice for Jamaica, um, and because of this, we didn't want to travel off on our own. We were also very aware of the recent dengue fever outbreak they had had. So again, we thought we'd be safer and feel more secure if we went on a Disney Cruise Line excursion, which is what we did. We also wanted to do something that was enriching for the boys, who have never been to the Caribbean and are both keen history buffs. We wanted them to know a bit about Jamaica and about its past. So we booked an excursion to the Greenwood Great House and we met in the Buena Vista Theatre on board the Disney Fantasy. Although we didn't know it because it had been a beautiful day, it had started to really rain heavily. When we got down to the gangway, they were giving out Disney Parks ponchos. Beth was so excited about this. I am so excited because these are not cheap. Um, and I was thrilled, thrilled to get one. They had adult sizes and children's sizes, so nice touch Disney. Look, my face says it all. You know, it didn't matter that it was raining, I had a good quality Disney Parks poncho. Which we still have. We will treasure them. We will use them for many visits to come. As we were on our way to the coaches, we got to pass through the shopping arcade at Falmouth Port. It is absolutely fantastic close up. And again, you could spend all day here if you wanted to. There was live music, there was food, obviously shopping and excursions to buy.
walk through this main area to the coaches. It's all very organised, all very clean, very impressed. The coaches were small but clean and air-conditioned, and both our driver and our guide had tons of local knowledge and they were super friendly. On the way to Greenwood Great House, it soon became clear that we were in a completely different part of the Caribbean than we were before, as each island has its own identity, its own look, and its own feel. The famous sprinter Usain Bolt is from this part of Jamaica. In fact, this is where our guide used to compete against him in athletics meets. Now, I'm not sure if that's completely true. Uh, I wonder if everybody in Jamaica competed against Usain Bolt at some point, but it's a great story. We passed by some palm trees and were really tickled to see the Jamaican flag's colours wrapped around the trunks. Greenwood Great House was built by the Barrett family and completed in the year 1800. In its heyday, they owned over 84,000 acres of land and had over 2,000 enslaved persons. Greenwood Great House is one of the last remaining great houses in Jamaica. The majority were burnt down during the uprising in 1831. It wasn't long after that Britain abolished slavery and emancipation happened in Jamaica. Some say the Barretts were sympathetic to the plight of the enslaved people, but there is no concrete record of this. What we do have is a lot of their belongings and obviously the great house itself, which is interesting to walk around and even more interesting to hear about from our guide. One of the most fascinating things about Greenwood Great House is that it is still a home. There are still people living in it to this day. Many of the antiques are still in working order, as you can see from this music box. and this player piano, which has not stood the test of time nearly as well. There are great views from the windows, as you'd imagine. They also explained how the houses were built north-facing. Obviously, there was no air conditioning then, so they would get the breeze coming through from the north and then exiting through windows at the back. Equally great views from the terrace, allowing the plantation owners to be able to see all of their land and all of the people working on it. We could even see our ship in the distance, back at Falmouth Port. We did think the tour would talk a little bit more about slavery and the abolishment of slavery in Jamaica. 
It wasn't until the end of the tour, when we were led into a side building for a drink, that we started to see any sign of the slave trade or any of the things about the uprising which happened in Jamaica. It was an interesting tour and I'm really glad we did it. It didn't take very long and we were back at the ship within three hours. On the way back, we passed through some neighborhoods and stopped at a church. We are not great fans of churches as tourist destinations, but it was quite interesting to see where the local people worship in Falmouth. It's very similar to churches in the United Kingdom, albeit in a tropical setting. If there was one part of this tour that I didn't like, it was being stuck at a tourist shop for half an hour. And as you can see, most of the other passengers didn't want to go there either. But soon we were back and the sun came with us and we were able to enjoy a little bit more of the shopping in the area around the port itself. the rain earlier it was really hot and sunny by the time we got back and we were really grateful for the drinks they had on offer as we got back on board. So our final thoughts on our three ports. Cozumel, what do you think? Absolutely loved it. I don't see any need to book a ship excursion as long as you're brave enough to hire a car or to explore the city itself. I mean there are some fantastic places you can go from Cozumel. You could go over to the mainland to Tulum, see the ruins there, that's pretty spectacular. And Escuret, Shellha, they're really great excursions you can take. But they are expensive and as you probably know by now we like to travel as often as we can. So we do budget where we can and not doing big excursions really helps us with that. So really pleased with what we did in Cozumel. Grand Cayman. Fabulous. I think that was my favourite day. It was just relaxing, really easy going. We got chatting to other people from the ship when we were in the sea and on the beach. Um, that was a great day. Yeah. And last but not least, Jamaica. I'm glad we went. <laughs> I'm glad we did a tour. It was, it was interesting, it really was. And I do feel that we saw a little bit more than if we'd just gone to another beach. I didn't feel like we saw enough of Jamaica. I was hoping that we'd see more and learn more uh, rather than just about a certain house and the certain individuals yeah, that lived in it. I think that's what we wanted. I think we wanted the boys to kind of understand the magnitude of the slave trade and um, how dreadful it was. And they didn't really explain that, I think, clearly enough. Because obviously it, it was horrendous. What was happening was horrific. So it would have been nice to have had a little bit more information on that. But, you know, three great ports, three great days. And obviously, Coming up next, we are doing our sea day vlogs. So you'll see next Monday, you'll see what we get up to when we're not in a port and we're cruising on board the Disney Fantasy. And that will include a full coverage of Jack Jack's Diaper Dash. The thing you've all been waiting for. You don't want to miss it. See you next week.